Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to make your own physics based door. And so in order to make this door, we will have to learn about hinges. And I will be going over all about hinges in this video. They're a very cool constraint in Roblox. They're super useful. I made a bunch of other projects like a revolving door or a folding chair with them. They're super cool. And we'll also be doing a little bit of scripting in order to make our door actually function when you click it. But make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you want, join my Discord server. The link will be in the description where we talk about scripting and a bunch of other stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So in front of me, I have two parts, one which resembles a door and one which resembles a pivot point for your door. So in order to set up my door, I'm going to first anchor my pivot point, And now we're going to make a hinge constraint between our door and our pivot point. So I'm going to go to cre model, create, hinge. And if you can't see it, it's in the drop down. You select hinge. And then I'm going to start it. At the very edge of this part, click once, and you'll see the green ball, which is an attachment, shows up. And I'm going to go all the way over to the other part, over here, and go to the very edge and click again. This is our hinge constraint. So you see, see right now, it looks kind of weird. It doesn't have much information. If you want to see more about your constraints, go to Model, Constraint Details, and then most of the time, I turn on Draw on top, so I can just see it wherever. And also, I'm going to go to Model, and then select Constraints. And so this basically keeps the limits and requirements of our constraints in mind when we're dragging, moving, rotating our parts. So you can see there's this little red line here, which says attachments aren't at the same location. And this is one big thing about hinges. The attachments have to be at the same location, just like a real hinge. So like if your hinge in real life was not attached to your door, like your door frame, it wouldn't work. Same with Roblox, but Roblox forcefully drags it to the position. So if I were to like just try to move this around, you can see it automatically snaps because I have constraints on. So this is our basic hinge. If we were to play this, let's just see how it works. So I walk around, I can hit my hinge. The door will rotate around. The door is pretty heavy, so it's kind of hard for my character to move it that easily. You can see the door can move around. It has way too free of a range of motion. In real life, a door would get stopped like right about right around there, but obviously I can just move it around. So this brings up a good point about how our angles and hinge constraint interact. So the way a hinge constraint works is it has two attachments, right? Both the attachments, their primary axes, their yellow axes, have to be pointing in the same direction. In my case, they're pointing upwards. And this means that the hinge will allow the parts to rotate around the axis in which they are both pointing. And so this would be the y-axis in world space, and it's like this way. So it's what you saw before. And there's also these secondary axes, and these determine the angle for your hinge. And the reason this is important is because if we want to put limits on our hinge, we have to enable angles to limit them and we have to know like how the angles work so in my hinge i'm going to go go and press limits enable you can see a bunch of things pop up don't get overwhelmed this little green thing is the limits of your hinge so right now if i were to play this you can see that the hinge can only go 45 degrees in either direction and that's because if I go back to this little area you can see here you have the main axis of your angle and it can only go 45 degrees in one direction 45 degrees in another and the way this angle is calculated is the angle between your attachment 0 secondary axis and your attachment 1 secondary axis so these arrows at the side are literally just rays that an angle is being calculated from Right now, personally, this doesn't look very intuitive. 
and it doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to take my secondary axes and rotate them to face towards our door part. I'm going to take both of them and do that. And the reason I'm doing both of them is because this sets, like, when the secondary the secondary axes are at the same location, that is angle 0 of your hinge. So right now it's at angle 0, and I want to set my limits. I'm going to set the lower angle to 0 and the upper angle to 90. So this gives it a 90 degree range of motion, just like a normal door in real life. Because it can only open up one way, it can't open up the other. So I'm not sure if... Uh, yeah, here we go. This is the right side. You can see you can open and close just normally. So this is all fine and good. But what if I want to go a step further? Because most doors in Roblox, they can be scripted so that when you click on them, they can open and close. And you can do that with this hinge setup as well. But first, you got to understand servos and hinges so basically what a servo and a hinge is is it's a type of actuator for the hinge so i have my hinge selected i go into the properties and you can see this actuator type property you can choose from none motor or servo so we're just going to talk about a servo a motor does what it says it does it just continually applies force to our hinge but we're going to use servo because that's more for precise movement aka opening and closing a door so there are a few properties, the speed, the max torque, and the target angle. So the target angle is the angle along, like, between the limits that we want to get our hinge to meet. So right now it's at angle 0, so if we want the door to open, we can set it to angle 90, target angle 90. But right now this will do nothing, and you can see it graphs out the way the hinge should move to reach the target angle. But right now it'll do nothing since the angular speed and servo max torque are not set. So I'm going to set the angular speed to something like 1000 and the servo max torque to something like 2000. And this will just add a little bit of acceleration. Just play around with these values. You can customize them to your liking. So if I were to just run this normally, the door will open to 90 degrees, which is exactly what we want. And the servo is pretty precise, so I can set it to something like 45 degrees just to demonstrate. And it goes to 45 degrees. So that's exactly what you want it to do. That's great. So I'm going to set it back to zero. And then I'm going to take my door and my pivot. And just group them. Because that will make it easier for me to work with with my script. And we're going to name this door. And I'm going to create a script in my door. And I'm going to go back. We'll deal with that script in just a second. And I'm going to go create a click detector inside of my door part so when you click on the door it will open now i'm going to go into my script define local door model equals script dot parent i'm going to define local door which will be equal to door model dot door i'm going to find local pivot which will be equal to door model dot pivot and then now we can just go define our click detector. So local click detector equals door dot click detector. There we go. And local hinge will be equal to pivot dot hinge constraint. I hope I spelled that right. And let's continue. So in order to understand if our door is open or closed, we need to give our script another variable local open and we're going to set this to false because right now the door is not open so open equals false this will be a boolean either true or false and then whenever you click on the door so let's say local click detector not local click detector we're just going to use click detector that we defined above we're going to say click detector dot mouse click and so whenever the player clicks the mouse this will fire we're going to connect a function and then enter, give us some space. We're going to set open equal to not open. So if open is false, it'll make it true. If open is true, it'll make it false. It just negates it, inverts it, whatever you want to say. And now we're going to find our target angle. And this target angle will be equal to open and 90 or 0. So what this means is it says if open is true, then... 
set the target angle to 90. We haven't set it yet, but this is just a variable. And if open is false, we set the target angle to zero. You don't really have to understand. This is some logic shorthand. It can make your script so much shorter. But for right now, we can just set hinge dot target angle to our target angle that we defined above. So this is about all the code you need. So I'm going to hop in to my game. And you can click on the door. And it takes a while sometimes, and it'll open. So this just depends on the properties that you give it. You can see the door can open and close however you please. And that's great. And it only opens one way, it doesn't matter. And since this is based off of a hinge and not a tween, for example, or C-frame, I can stand in front of my door and it won't close. But this just depends on how much speed and max torque you give it. I can stand in front of it again, it won't close. And when it's closed, I can even like manually push it back in sometimes. And if someone tries to open it from the other side, I can just stand in front of it and it prevents them from getting through. You could do that as well. It just depends on what you want. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hinges are super fun and super useful in Roblox. And if you are wondering, there will be a model link in the description if you want to check it out. And in the background, you can also see a few other creations I've made with hinges, like a little folding chair. It's nice and simple, but it looks pretty good. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And you can also see I have a revolving door, which that was pretty cool. I think it's a cool little hinge feature. And if you guys want to see these, make sure to comment down below and comment any suggestions or questions that you may have. But other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you.